Welcome. This video is going to introduce you to something called gas stoichiometry. It's a combination of using stoichiometry, being able to predict product or reactant based on another amount that you're given, and combining it with the gas laws. So let's just review a little bit about a balanced equation. A balanced equation shows the ratio of moles being used, or your reactants, to the moles of the product being produced. And because of Avogadro's principle, you can also think of these coefficients as showing you the ratio of volumes for any gases being used. If you wanted to, you could go ahead and change it to volume amounts, but the ratio is going to work out the same. So this means your coefficients of any equation really tell you three things simultaneously. It's telling you the number of molecules or atoms of each substance involved. Okay, again, remember, think of this as a recipe, how many cups of each you need or the ratio. But because we don't usually deal with just molecules or atoms, we're thinking much larger scale enough to measure, we usually think of it as the moles of each substance involved. And now we can think of it as the liters or the volume of each gaseous substance involved. The one thing an equation can't tell us directly is the mass of any substances. And that's where stoichiometry comes in. We need to be able to convert back and forth between grams and moles, or in this case, liters and moles. So for example, I've got a balanced equation here showing that two molecules or two moles of butane will combine with 13 moles of oxygen to produce 8 moles of carbon dioxide and 10 moles of water. But I also notice that all four substances are gases. So this is also telling me I have 2 liters of butane combining with 13 liters of oxygen to give me 8 liters of CO2 and 10 liters of water. So I have all kinds of conversion factors available to me here. So let's look at a few uh, things we can calculate just from this one equation. My first question asks, how many moles of oxygen are required to produce 35 moles of water? Well, using my usual strategy, I'm going to write down what I've been given. I've been told I have 35 moles of water. And what I'm being asked to do is determine moles of oxygen and I have moles of water. So where can I get that conversion factor from? My equation. I see that I can expect 13 moles of oxygen to produce 10 moles of water. So it's a 13 to 10 ratio. So I could go ahead and take 35 times 13 divided by 10, or 35 times 1.3, however you want to think of it. And I should expect 45.5 moles of O2 to be used to produce my 35 moles of water. Second question says, how many liters of butane does it take to completely react with 50 liters of oxygen? Again, I'm going to write down what I've been given, 50 liters of O2. I'm going to set up my ratio or my conversion factor of what I want, liters of butane, C4H10. I've been given liters of O2. And again, looking at my equation, I can see that I will use 2 liters of butane for every 13 liters of O2. So now when I do my math, 50 times 2, or 100 divided by 13, I can expect to use 7.69 liters of butane. And you can see why I you know, use the substances formula along with just moles, or you can get pretty confused quickly with your liters and moles. So our molar ratios have now expanded to liter ratios. And the last question, just to remind you, depending upon what you're doing, um, different chemical fields work with very small amounts sometimes, especially if we're talking about toxins, things that we don't want in our water or food supply, whatever. So I've got a problem here saying how many molecules of oxygen are needed to react with eight molecules of butane. So I have eight molecules of C4H10. I'm being asked to come up with molecules of O2. I have molecules of C4H10. And I see that that ratio is 13 over 2. So this time, I'm going to take the 8 times 13 and divide by 2. And I'm going to come up with 52 
molecules of O2. I can't quite fit molecules on there, but I mean molecules, not moles. So here's an example for you to try. Using the same equation, see if you can determine how many moles of carbon dioxide are produced from five moles of butane and how many liters of butane would have to burn to produce 50 liters of water. So go ahead and pause and try this before you watch my solutions. So moles of carbon dioxide, five moles of butane, write down the five moles of C4H10, set up my ratio of eight moles of CO2 from two moles of C4H10. And again, you can either punch this into your calculator, five times eight divided by two, or if you realize it's a eight over two is just four. Either way you do it, you should come up with 20 moles of CO2. If I have 50 liters of water and I want to know how many liters of butane, I look at my equation and I see that it is a 2 to 10 ratio. So again, multiply by 2, divide by 10, or if you see that that's 1 fifth, either way, you should come up with 10 liters of C4. H10. Okay, so those are the easy ones because we didn't have to do any converting between grams. But oftentimes you have a gas or a liquid that the volume is easy to measure, but then you also have a solid or some other substance where mass becomes involved. So when you don't have all gases and you can't just convert between uh, volumes, then we need to involve our stoichiometry and convert from grams to moles. So because an equation is telling us volume, moles, and molecules, we can use the mass of one reactant to predict the volume of another reactant or the volume of one reactant to predict the mass of another. Before when we did stoichiometry, we just predicted mass of one and used it to predict mass of another. So let's look at what's different here. In this case, I've got dinitrogen oxide and water being produced from ammonium nitrate. And it says calculate the volume of dinitrogen oxygen. So that's what I want there is I'm trying to come up with liters of N2O. And I'm starting with 5.5 grams of NH4NO3. So I like to write my information right up by the equation so I got a visual of where I'm starting and where I'm trying to get to. And then it gives me some more information. It says 5.5 grams of ammonium nitrate is decomposed in a 100 liter container at a pressure of two atmospheres and 355 degrees Celsius. Now it's important to remember that these conditions are for the whole equation. You don't just have the reactant in these conditions and then the product somewhere else. This is all being done in a closed system, so nothing's getting in or out. So the conditions, pressure, volume, temperature, that's only important to us if we're dealing with gases. So that's important on our product side. But on our reactant side, the ammonium nitrate is a solid. So Anytime I'm trying to convert between an equation, I have to have like units. So I can't go from grams to liters. I either have to change my grams into liters or my liters into grams or change them both to moles. Moles is the language that we can talk between substances. So I'm going to take my 5.5 grams of NH4NO3 and I'm going to convert it to moles. And remember our old friend molar mass, if I want to know moles and grams, I have to get out my periodic table and add up the two nitrogen, the four hydrogen, and the three oxygen. And when I do that, I come up with a molar mass of 80.06. So 5.5 grams isn't going to be much. But that's kind of typical. So keeping two sig figs, I would round this to 0.069 moles and realistically just keep it in your calculator and just keep your tally going. I'm just going to label this NH4NO3 so I remember what I'm dealing with. So now that I know how much NH4NO3 I have, I can take that 0 0.069 moles of ammonium nitrate. I can use my balanced equation 
and see that I should get one mole of N2O from every one mole of NH4. And some of you are thinking, really? I have to show my work for one over one? It's important that you um, at least acknowledge that you looked at the molar ratio because some people totally skip this step and when it's one to one it works out. But if it's not one to one, you're going to have a problem. You're going to have too much or too little. So this is 0.069 moles of N2O. And now I have to convert it back to my liters. So this is where it's just slightly different than the previous problems we've done. Because instead of using molar mass to change back to grams, I'm going to use my information that they've given me about the volume and pressure and temperature and convert this to liters. Because I have volume, pressure, and temperature, the equation I should use here is PV equals NRT. So if I plug in what I've been given, I've got 12 atmospheres. V is what I want to know. I figured out I have 0 0.069 moles. R is going to be 0.0821 since my pressure is in atmospheres. And I remember this 355 has to be added to 273 to get it into Kelvin. So this is really a temperature of 628. So to solve for V, divide both sides by 12. And my volume then is going to be 0.296, or keeping just two sig figs, 0 0.30, and my label is liters. So here's one for you to try. I've given you some hints. Use the same equation. And I would encourage you to stop and see if you can solve this on your own or see how far you can get using the hints. And then I will go ahead and work my solution for when you're ready. So it, it asked the for the mass of ammonium nitrate, so I'm trying to come up with grams here, that must be used to obtain 0 0.10 liters of dinitrogen gas at STP. So that is my condition, standard temperature and pressure. So the first thing I can do is change my 0 0.10 liters to moles. I'm going to need moles of this because then that will help me predict moles of NH4NO3 and then I can change moles back to grams. So I'm basically working the opposite way as I did on the previous one. And that's not unusual that you know how much product you need to be making so you have to figure out how much reactant should you start with. So 0 0.10 liters of N2O and I could plug this into PV equals NRT since I know standard temperature is 0 and standard temperature is 1. Although remember, zero degrees Celsius is really 273 Kelvin. Or I can use Avogadro's um, principle that one mole at STP is 22.4 liters. So 0 0.10 liters is only 0 0.0045 moles of any gas. So in this case, it's NH4, and N2O, I'm sorry. So in this case, we've got 0 0.0045 moles of N2O. So how many mole? Uh, we've got our moles here. So how many moles of NH4NO3 is that? Well, remember we saw in the previous problem that it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So again, if this was you working on a test, I would accept it if you just went ahead and put one-to-one -one here and let me know you'd looked at it. Uh, for those of you who are a little more literal or visual, need to see it more exactly. What we're really doing is taking 0 0.0045 moles of the N2O and we're going to convert it to moles of NH4NO3 by using our molar ratio from our problem which is one mole of N2O gives us one mole of ammonium nitrate. So this is 0 0.0045 moles of NH4NO3 also and so then, my final step is to convert that to grams. So 0 0.0045 moles of NH4NO3 can be converted to grams by using the molar mass. So one mole goes on the bottom, my grams goes on the top. You maybe remember from the previous problem, it was 80 point something. 80 point 